Yes, I am off on another shopping expedition this morning. I'm heading back to the Mid Valley Mega Mall to drop in on the GoPro store. I intended to do that on my last trip there, but I got so involved in looking at backpacks that I completely forgot about a couple of GoPro accessories that I need. So, heading back to the Mega Mall. Mega Mall, Mega Mall, Mega Mall. Just love saying Mega Mall. And believe it or not, in terms of getting there, I think I'm going to try to take a rapid KL bus. And I'm going to do this on purpose, not because I have to or because I want to make a video about it. It might be the uh, easiest way of getting there from here, from uh, Pass Arseni. Bus 781. See how this works out. As far as shopping is concerned, what I really want to pick up today are a couple of like GoPro mounts. The main one I'm interested in is uh, a nerdy and goofy uh, head strap because I often want to do something with the GoPro but have my hands free and there's no way to do that. So I want to pick up one of these uh, head straps so you can mount your GoPro you know, on your forehead and then you can film something that you're doing with your hands. I know that's a very nerdy, very goofy looking, but it's really the only way you can do that. You know, they also sell kind of a chest mount for the GoPro. You can put the camera right on your chest if you're mountain biking, I guess, and doing stuff like that. But uh, that's even more goofy. I just want to get the little uh, head strap, see how that works out. I was just checking the routes for the different buses that stop here, and it looks like bus 770 also goes to Mid Valley. So, uh, and a bus 770 just happened to uh, show up. And so I thought I'd uh, try that one out. So far, in terms of this bus versus the KTM versus the LRT uh, fight, the bus is losing badly because I've been waiting here a long time. Uh, bus 781 still hasn't shown up. Bus 770 was here behind me, but the driver just got off and he went wandering away somewhere. So I don't know when this bus is going to leave. And I've been waiting here so long that I could easily have just gone to KL Central and hopped on the uh, KTM train at uh, 1240 and I would have been on my way already, but I'm still here just waiting for the bus. So. Uh, Anyway, I think my driver is coming. On the bus, used my touch and go card. So far, so good. And we're just leaving from Pass Arseni. From the uh, route map that I saw for 770, it seems to go almost exactly the same way that 781 goes. I'm sure it must follow a different route at some point, but from here until Mid Valley, at least, you know, it seems to go in exactly the same direction as uh, 781. So we'll find out. I did ask the driver, you know, whether we, whether this bus goes to Mid Valley or not. And I swear, I thought he was going to punch me in the face. I mean, <laughs> he just sort of looked at me and he looked so angry. He just sort of stared at me. And I asked him a second time and then a third time, you know, it's like, does, you know, this bus, does it go to Mid Valley, Mid Valley Mega Mall? And he just kind of looked so angry <laughs> the whole time. I don't know why. And then he finally just nodded and then walked away. So not a lot of human warmth coming out of the driver of this bus. Now I just have to remember to keep an eye out for other passengers getting off. I want to see whether they scan their touch and go card when they get off the bus as well. Passing by uh, Passer Seni Station. So far so good, we're heading in the right direction towards uh, KL Central and then into Little India. And then we should pass over the Klang River, do a loop there and then head down the highway. And once I get on the uh, highway, one of the first stops should be uh, Mid Valley. This bus is rattling almost as much as uh, my first bus. 
loose chairs. I continue to find buses confusing because this bus, 770, just stopped at this uh, Brickfields bus stop. But when I look at the sign for all the buses that stop here, 770 isn't listed. And yet it does stop here. So yeah, even the rapid KL of bus signs don't seem to be up to date. Valley stop, and I've noticed that everybody is uh, touching their touch and go card to the scanner. So that's what you're supposed to do. bus 770 and since I've been here before on 7A1 I know exactly what to do I have to cross this bridge and there's Mid Valley Mega Mall right up there as I walked by the front door of the bus I made eye contact with the driver and since I'd asked him for you know information I gave him a little little nod and a thank you wave and then he just gave me this death stare he just sort of stared back at me <laughs> no reaction at all so I guess he uh, he's one of those drivers doesn't like interacting with his uh, passengers I can't blame him they did have a route map right there if I want to know whether the bus goes to uh, mid valley I can just look at the schedule right and I did I just wanted to confirm with the driver just to make sure but I don't think he saw that as part of his job. My technical note for today, I'm using my Saramonic lavalier mic again. I keep trying to figure out a way to uh, get it to work. Man, these motorcycles are noisy. And I've also changed up a bunch of settings on the GoPro. I usually shoot at a 1080p resolution but I was watching a video this morning from a you know, professional uh, filmmaker and he gave his recommended settings for the GoPro and he uses 2700 uh, P and he shoots at 30 frames per second and he had a bunch of other settings he changed. Um, for example, he dialed in like point minus 0.5 exposure compensation and I thought I'd try that out as well. Because I have found when I look at the footage from the GoPro when I'm outside, it is a little bit bright, you know, maybe a little bit overexposed. I've often thought that. So adding, you know, a little bit of exposure compensation, yeah, I'll give that a try. Shooting at 2700p at 30 frames per second. I wonder what the footage will look like, but I'm also curious how big or how small the files will be. You know, will they be big files or still the same size as a 1080p 60? We'll find out. I'm back at the uh, dangerous uh, crosswalk. On the other side of that exit ramp, there's another one here for pedestrians. This one actually has a marking that it is a pedestrian crosswalk but there's no you know, lighting system or anything to stop traffic. You just have to wait until there's a break in traffic and then a dash across. But yeah, traffic is uh, coming out of that uh, highway at a pretty fast pace. I've actually got a bunch of things at the GoPro store I want to look at. I mentioned the head strap for the GoPro, but I'd also like to pick up some kind of a handlebar mount when I go to uh, Myanmar, I'll probably end up renting a, an e-bike or a scooter at some point or, or bicycle, something like that. And I want to be able to mount the uh, GoPro on the handlebars easily and keep it steady there. 
And in the future, I'll probably want to be able to do that on my own bicycle. So I'm thinking of what is the best way to do that. I recently saw a, a YouTuber, you know, cycling around the world on one of these big journeys. And what he had done was take a long selfie stick and then he put attached it to the handlebars with a whole bunch of straps and rubber bands and things like that. So then he could have the uh, GoPro, you know, as high up or as low down as he wanted just by uh, extending the uh, pole. And that seemed like a pretty good idea. But the camera always seemed way too close to his face because he can't angle the pole. It only goes straight up from the handlebars. I want to somehow figure out a way to have a long pole on the handlebars, but then have it extended out in front of the bike and then go up and be able to you know, move it around. And from what I've seen online, that kind of mount doesn't exist. <laughs> that always happens to me. I always seem to want to do the one thing with the GoPro or whatever it is I'm using that nobody else in the world ever wants to do. So they don't uh, create mounts for the things that I want to do usually. You can mount it on the handlebars quite easily, pointing ahead of you on the bicycle. But what I want to do is to be able to raise it up, turn it around and occasionally have it pointed back at me and have it pointed ahead, you know? Um, but to do that, I want to extend it in front of me a little bit. Um, and in order to do that, I'll probably have to buy a whole bunch of different mounts and Frankenstein them together somehow. Yeah, we'll see. One of the joys of being me. When I was at the Mega Mall last time, I went on an extended rant about how the map system at most shopping malls doesn't help you out very much. They're really difficult to understand. So I'm going to test it again today. I want to go to the GoPro store. There is a dedicated GoPro only store here. And I'm going to look on this map and uh, see if I can find it on this map and see if it can uh, help me uh, track it down. So the way these maps work, I have to figure out first what category GoPro would be in. Entertainment, electrical and communications. Uh, you'd think it would be there, but I don't see GoPro. Food and beverages, homes, information and technology. Ah, Vivo and GoPro S098. So now I know that S stands for second floor and 098. So here's second floor. And where's 098? There it is, right there. So near center court on this side. But to get to the second floor, of course, I have to know what floor I'm on. Oh, and the map, it passes the test. It has a you are here marker. There it is down there. So you are here. I'm here at the north court and I'm on the first floor. So I have to go up to the second floor. So the map actually worked out a little bit that time. I still think it would be better if it was listed alphabetically, then I could just look for GoPro under G. And I think the floors should be marked with numbers instead of letters. So instead of S for second, it just should be the number two, you know, two floor, you know, two FL or something like that. So this shopping mall is passing a lot of my tests actually, because a lot of shopping malls won't tell you what floor you're on when you get to the escalator. But this one actually has a sign here at the very bottom that says, you know, number one. So I know I'm on the first floor. And a lot of the shopping malls, they don't tell you what floor you arrive on. So often you're going up in the escalator and you kind of lose track of things. So you get to the top and then you look around and it's like, hold it, what floor am I on? and there's no signs anywhere in front of me. 
to tell me what floor I'm on. And there really should be one right here that says, you know, floor number two. But they do have a sign here, but you have to turn around uh, to see it. I've often thought that the sign should be right in front of you as you come off the uh, escalator. So we're up on the second floor. Just going to walk towards the center court and I should find the GoPro store off on my left there. I remember from before that the Olympus store is up here. I've often uh, dropped in on Olympus. I'm very curious to find out when the new EM5, the OMD EM5 Mark III is coming out. It's supposed to be uh, released this year, but I haven't heard any uh, announcements about it. So I'm gonna drop by Olympus uh, before I leave the mall. And we're zeroing in on the GoPro store. I think it's right here on my right, if I remember right. Yep, there it is. I don't know if that means, uh, hello, how are you? I came to look at your accessories. Okay, sounds good to me. Do you mind if I film in here a little bit? So, looks like they have all the accessories here just about. Some of them come in kits, like the travel kit, the adventure kit, sports kit, things like that. And I was looking at the kits, but I didn't find one that combined all the uh, accessories that I'm looking for. So first, I want to look for the head strap. And where's that? And with my luck, that will be the one thing that they don't carry. The one thing that I really want. Uh oh, I don't see it anywhere. So it turns out that they do carry it. I just didn't see it right away. It's right here called the head strap and quick clip because two items come in it, the head strap and then a little clip here that you can attach to baseball caps or straps on your backpack and, and different things like that. I don't really know how useful this thing is, but uh, it could be useful. Um, everything here is supposed to be 10% off, so this would be like 90 ringgit for that. Seems to be pretty well made. This is it here, their display model. Has um, pretty thick straps. Adjustable, of course, on all the sides. One over the top of your head and on the side. And on the inside of the strap, they have some uh, rubberization here. So it sticks to your head a little bit better may or may not be good in hot weather. I don't know, to have rubber on your head. And the mounting system on the front is the standard uh, GoPro mount. And there's no ratcheting in there. To get the angle, you just tighten it or loosen it and then move, move the GoPro to the angle that you want. So from what I've seen, this will do uh, quite well for me. It's a little bit bigger and thicker than maybe I would like but you kind of want it to be fairly big because you're holding on to a $400 camera you don't want it to fall off your head and break or anything like that so I think I will get one of these today at least that was my main goal for today and what else have we got here for a long time, I've been thinking of trying out this uh, three-way, but I have some questions about it, and I think they have a model on display. It's quite an interesting device because you can use it as just a simple grip and then as a selfie pole, and then it can adjust all kinds of different angles depending what you want to do with the GoPro. And then it has a little tripod converter tucked away in the bottom. So it's got multiple functions built into it and it can fold down into a fairly small little package. But I was talking about how I want to use it on a bicycle and this would be useful because I could point it forward from the handlebars and then angle it upwards. If you have just a selfie stick, 
you can't do that. It just goes on a straight line, of course. But I don't know if there's any way to mount this onto a handlebar mount. So that's what I want to find out. So this is the uh, three-way that I was looking at. Uh, I was talking about it over there on the uh, wall. And the advantage to this is that it can stretch out quite far, just like a selfie stick with the three sections. You know, it has one, two, three parts. And then you can also fold it down into just two sections or like it is now, just one. So it has three different lengths. And then it has the tripod mount in the bottom. It can do all kinds of different things. But the one thing that I want to do with this is the one thing apparently I can do. I want to be able to mount this on a tripod, like use a tripod mount, but there's no attachment point at the bottom. So there's no way to mount this on top of anything else. Uh, unless there's some sort of adapter that I don't know about. But there's no official GoPro way of attaching this to another mount. So I can't put it on my bicycle. That I, there's no way I can uh, do that that I can figure out. But it is a nifty little, uh, nifty little device. I can't put it on handlebars. And the other problem with it is perhaps the price. You know, it's not very, it's not cheap. When really all it is, I already have a gorilla pod, and I have another tripod. So this is like adding one more tripod that I don't need. You know. So it's a lot of money to spend for yet another uh, mounting device. It's still kind of hard to figure out how to do all this, you know, without having this and my bicycle in front of me at the same time. Because they have mounts for mounting them on uh, handlebars, but there's two different sizes, a small and a big. And I'm not really sure what size would work on uh, my handlebars or on a motorcycle or scooter, something like that. And the other option is what they call the uh, JAWS clamp here. I'll show you what it looks like. And that's this thing here. It has like a bendable arm with a GoPro mount. And then this huge pincher claw, which is kind of handy for clipping it to tables, chairs, you know, anything like that. But you could maybe, if you were on a smooth road, you know, even clip, clamp that onto a handlebars. I don't think you'd want to do that permanently, you know, it's, it's going to come loose if you go over bumps and stuff like that, but it's, uh, it's an option anyway. And GoPro makes its own, you know, huge selfie pole, this one, the El Grande, I think it goes out to like 38 inches, so it's really, really long when you extend it. And. Um, that might be handy because I could mount, figure out if I could figure out a way to mount that on uh, my bicycle, but I'm not sure if I can or not. Well, I had kind of a mixed result at the uh, GoPro store. All the different adapters and mounting systems that they have there, there was no way to put any of them together in a way that would suit me. And like most companies, GoPro makes all kinds of weird decisions that don't seem to make any sense to me. I was talking about their uh, selfie pole, the El Grande. It's a very long pole and you could probably use it in a lot of different ways. And I was looking at their display model and the display model had a tripod mount on the bottom of the handle. So I thought, wow, okay, that could be useful. You know, you could somehow attach the El Grande using that tripod mount to another adapter onto a bicycle clamp of some kind. But then they told me that, well, only the display models have that. When you buy the El Grande itself, it does not have a tripod mount in the base. So, yeah, <laughs> so you can't do it. Why the display model has it, I couldn't tell you, but the actual ones you buy, they tell me, uh, don't have a tripod mount. And the three-way pole has no way to mount it onto anything. It can't be mounted onto any GoPro uh, mounting system, any tripod system, nothing at all. All you can do is hold on to it. It has no way to attach it to anything else. Which for a, you know, a $100 uh, piece of gear, you'd think you'd be able to do that with it. Seems like a real bad design oversight. 
especially when you consider that the three-way, as far as I know, has stayed exactly the same for years and years and years and years. Uh, it came out many years ago, and it's never been changed, it's never been improved, it's never been altered in any way. So GoPro kind of gave up on the design and never tried to make it any better in the future, which is kind of weird. And I found I had a lot of trouble with the sales clerks there. I hate to say it, but I did. There was one thing there, a little adapter they called a swivel mount. And I thought that could be very useful because if it swivels, you could just turn the GoPro around, you know, just swivel it in different directions. So I picked up the swivel mount, and as far as I could tell, it just would not move at all. I used as much strength as I dared, and it just would not turn. It looked like it should, but it wouldn't. So I asked the uh, sales clerk, the woman that works there, like, um, can this actually turn? Like, can it swivel? And she said, no, can't. No, can't. And that made no sense at all because the direction that it mount was pointing, your GoPro would be pointing off at 90 degrees, like off to the left. So if you mount it on your bicycle, instead of pointing forward, it would be pointing to the side the whole time. So I pointed that out to her and says, well, if it can't turn and you mount this on your handlebars, it's gonna be pointing to the side. And she said, yes, that's right. I said, well, why would you want to do that? You know, you want to point the camera ahead of you. And she said, yes, that's what you want. I says, well, but this one, you can't point it ahead because it won't turn. And she says, no, it won't turn. And we went around and around and around in circles. She spoke perfectly good English. She understood me, but she knew nothing about the product. She really couldn't help me in any way. And finally, the manager who was sitting over at the counter he was listening to this, I guess, and he came, he came over and he says, no, no, it swivels. And he grabbed it and he used all of his strength and uh, he managed to turn it. And I was like, oh, okay, so it does swivel. So I turned to the original sales clerk and I said, oh, so it does turn. And she says, yes, it turns. I said, and I tried to say to her, well, you told me like five times that it doesn't turn. And she just looked at me and just didn't care, stone face, absolute stone face. And I think she was waiting for me to buy something, give her money or go away. She knew nothing about her own products. So yeah, sales clerks, funny, uh, funny career choice for someone who doesn't actually want to help customers, you know? But at least the manager did tell me that that swivel mount does in fact swivel. You have to use a lot of strength to do it so I don't know whether it would be of much uh, use to me or not, but at least I know that it swivels. But by the time I was finished uh, chatting with the sales clerk there, I was a little bit annoyed, so I don't really want to buy anything from them right now. I'm going to look at other places and find a place that sells the same GoPro products and maybe buy it from them instead. And maybe they have some third-party uh, accessories that work better. So I'm... <sighs> Not a very successful shopping run so far. Anyway, let's go keep looking around. So I'm inside my favorite store at the Mega Mall. This is the uh, Osprey outlet. And this is where I bought my uh, Farpoint Trek 75. You can see uh, one of them uh, right up here. So that's the one that I bought. You can see they have a huge selection here. They have every single model of Osprey bag you can think of. These are all the backpacks, travel ones, and hiking bags. I'm pretty sure everything that Osprey makes, you know, every single bag is on display here. And then on this side, all of the uh, knapsacks. And then all of the Osprey uh, accessories. So if you like uh, Osprey products, this is the place to come. They have everything here. And I originally came in here because I was seriously thinking about getting one of these, these uh, transporters. This is the new Transporter 95. So it's a good volume for me. Nice, simple, you know, rectangular shape, duffel bag. And then it has uh, shoulder straps. 
that uh, tuck away inside this uh, back pocket. Handles all over the place. So it's basically a duffel bag, but with uh, shoulder straps. And I was very intrigued by that idea. It's the 95 liter, and uh, they make even a bigger one, 130 liters. Is this the 130 liter? Yeah, so this is the huge one here. And in the end, I decided against it, mainly because even though it's a duffel bag and it's much lighter and simpler, it still weighs, you know, a good four pounds. So it weighs the same amount as one of these, you know, highly technical, you know, travel backpacks with a waist belt. Because that's the one thing that's missing from the uh, duffel bag is there's no waist belt. So all of the weight is being carried on your shoulders by those straps. And that would be fine for going from the airport to your hotel, you know, to the train station, that sort of thing. But if you ever wanted the option of walking a bit further, you know, even two or three kilometers, uh, a duffel bag like that would quickly become really uncomfortable. And then you want the waist belt and the suspension harness of a real uh, backpack. Um, if the duffel bag weighed something like uh, two pounds, you know, I probably would have picked one up. But if it weighs, you know, four or five pounds, the same weight as a real backpack, then I figured, you know, I might as well get the, uh, the backpack. And right beside it is the same model. Like this is the Farpoint Trek and this is the Fairview Trek, but it's actually the same basic bag. It's just that they give it a different name for the women's model. They call it Fairview. For men, they call it Farpoint. And um, they offer different colors, you know, like this uh, purple color. Yeah, Osprey makes uh, some good products. So far, I'm uh, yeah, very happy with my uh, Farpoint Trek. And there's the whole store. I think every store in Kuala Lumpur that sells Osprey gets their products from here. This is the main distributor for Malaysia for uh, Osprey. But I don't need to buy anything here today. I just came to uh, look around. On to the next store. I had an interesting experience at uh, Osprey as well, though, as far as sales clerks go. I kind of did a test with the woman who was helping me. I was looking at some backpacks and we were chatting about them. And I started saying things about the bags that were completely wrong. You know, it's like, oh, this is a you know, 90 liter backpack when it was like a 20 liter knapsack. And she would just say, yes, correct. Every single thing I said, no matter how wrong it was or how dumb it was, she just agreed with me and said yes. So she, she wasn't paying any attention at all. So. <laughs> Yeah, sales. So I'm going to head to the Olympus store now and uh, chat with them about cameras, see what they have to say. Well, it is time to get out of here, I think. I'm just going to go back to the uh, GoPro store and buy the head mount for the GoPro. I think I have a, a use for that. As for all the other options, you know, the mounts for mounting on handlebars and things like that, couldn't really find anything that I was confident I needed or would work for me. So I'm going to set that aside for now. If I decide to mount the GoPro on a uh, scooter in Myanmar or something, I'll just do it with my Gorillapod again. You know, I'll figure something out and uh, think of it as a long term project to find a good way to mount it on a bicycle and be able to swivel it around and things like that. For now, I'll just get the um, head strap for the GoPro and head out of here. I hate to say it, but I went into three or four other stores here, like camera stores and electronic stores, and every single sales clerk that I spoke to, they knew nothing about their products. I have had good experiences at Mega Mall before, but today things just are not working out um, they really aren't <laughs> oh well I'm just leaving the mega mall and the gardens mall I thought I would walk back to uh, Bangsar station just because I can pass by my favorite manga Susu 
spot. I, uh, I had a lot of trouble with the sales clerks on this uh, trip, so I think I need to uh, reward myself with a manga shake, a mango shake. And as I was going out the back door, I found myself by that bridge that goes over to uh, Abdullah Hukum uh, LRT station. Here it is right over there. It's this bridge going all the way across, across this highway complex. And from here, I mean, it looks like it's done, right? I mean, the whole structure is there, but that's exactly what it looked like seven or eight months ago. So I don't know what they've been doing all this time why they haven't finished it, why they haven't opened it yet. The last time I tried to use that bridge, I thought it was open and I ended up down on ground level over there. And I walked across all these highways like this curving exit and ramp right here. I had to fight all the cars to get across these highways uh, to get here because that uh, bridge isn't open yet. Somebody better get on that bridge, finish it. At the last minute, I almost bought the three-way uh, mount for the GoPro. It's starting to seem more and more like a good idea now that I'm thinking about it because as I'm walking around with the GoPro like this, I'm using the Gorilla Pod and I have to lift my arm quite high up in the air to hold the camera, you know, in its current location. And if I use something like that three-way pull, I don't have to do that. I can hold my arm much lower down and it takes a lot less uh, energy to do that. Plus I can use it in, you know, many different ways that I, I can't use this uh, Gorilla Pod. So I almost bought it, but then I, at the last minute I realized that it only has a GoPro mount on the top and my Ulanzi cage for my GoPro it doesn't have a GoPro mount. It has a tripod mount. So now in order to use the three-way, I would have to get a GoPro to tripod mount adapter. So I need that adapter, but of course, GoPro doesn't make that adapter and that store doesn't sell that adapter. I went to every store in all of the Mega Mall and the Gardens Mall and nobody sells an adapter like that. So what is it about my life that I need so many adapters? Nothing I buy ever quite fits together. I have to link them together with so many adapters. It always seems to work out that way. Oh, I need a mango shake. Let's go get it. I'm also reluctant to buy that three-way GoPro, you know, selfie stick or whatever you want to call it, just because it's overpriced. You know, GoPro kind of has the market cornered when it comes to this sort of thing, and they charge so much for their accessories. So, uh, and as I said earlier, they haven't improved the design in any way since, you know, they came out with this product. And there's something about it that bugs me. It just feels that little bit cheap and badly made, you know. It's, it's a good product for what it can do, I guess. Um, the function that it has is, is valuable to me. But the overall design, feels cheap. It feels like it should be priced at about half of what they're charging. So I'm kind of resentful that you have to spend so much to get this thing, especially when I then have to get all kinds of adapters to make it work. Plus, you know, they don't have any kind of a mounting system on the bottom of this thing, which they could easily add and uh, wouldn't cost them much to do it. But they just don't really care about uh, the design that much. So getting closer to my manga susu place. I have to say that the last time I came through here, I had a bit of a bad experience. Again, I hate to say it, customer service. Uh, I went up to this place and the women there were sitting at a table talking, chatting with each other. And I waited a long time and they just ignored me. They, they wouldn't serve me. So let's uh, see what happens this time. <laughs> yeah, I just stood at the counter. And I was waiting and uh, no, they, they wouldn't come up to the counter. But we'll see whether they uh, come up to the counter this time. I think in Malaysia and in this culture in general, you're supposed to yell at someone to get service. And had I, you know, shouted at this woman like, hey, you know, come here, serve me. She would have come up and served me. 
but it's not the way I operate. I'm, I don't feel comfortable doing that. And there it is over there. Is it open? It's hard to tell with a tent like that, you know? Ah, yeah, it seems to be open and someone is there. Ooh. Hello. Um, a manga susu. Yeah. And here's the sign for this place. And I guess a large, I'm guessing basar means large. It's five ringgit and small, three and a half ringgit. Thank you very much. Well, there it is, my large manga susu. To be honest, I, I probably should have gotten the small or medium, whatever size that is. I don't really need something quite so big. <laughs> but when I'm ordering something, I tend to follow the path of least resistance. You know, whatever is easiest, whatever requires the least amount of explanation. The more words I use, the more chance there is that something will go wrong. So I just ask for manga susu and whatever they make, that's what I pay for. If I start asking questions about, you know, large and small and medium and this and that, something will go wrong and I'll end up with something that I don't want <laughs> or nothing at all. So I just try to keep it as simple as possible. Anyway, time to have some of this manga susu. Still as big as ever, as big as my head. Let's see how it tastes. Mm. Oh, that's so good. I'm a simple man of simple tastes. As long as it's uh, ice cold, I'm generally happy with almost whatever I order. And this is really good. Not too sweet. It is sweet. I mean, they add some kind of a uh, liquid sugar or something. So it's a little bit sweet, but not overly so. So yeah, I think it's pretty good. I'm at Bangsar LRT station now. Just finished my manga susu. Time to head back to the guest house. Have a cup of coffee, relax, and try out the, my new uh, head strap for the GoPro. back in Pass Arseni, right outside my guest house. About to head in, have that cup of coffee. Still thinking about buying that GoPro uh, three-way mount, but I kind of have to wait until I go to a shop where I know they sell the adapter for it as well. So I know if I can, if I buy it and then I find out I can't adapt it to my Ulanzi cage, then it's useless to me. So I need to find the adapter first, then maybe I could buy the uh, three-way mount from GoPro. So that's the end of my uh, shopping expedition for today. I'm sure there will be another one tomorrow and uh, I'll see you in that video.